Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about SharePoint team sites. Now, this is quite a confusing topic, so what I'm going to do is show you a couple of different examples of SharePoint team sites, show you their layouts, pros and cons, and why you would use a team site. So first off, I should explain that a SharePoint team site is a collaborative platform designed for team members to work together, share information, and manage projects. It's part of Microsoft SharePoint and a web-based tool for document management and overall collaboration. Now, the thing which gets people quite confused is that actually, when we refer to as Teams now, quite often we're referring to Microsoft Teams. And Microsoft Teams, as in the chat platform, when you create a team, so you could create, for example, here I've got this crisis communication team. You might create a Microsoft team called crisis communications, and that's where you have your chats and things like that. But when you create a Microsoft team, you also create a SharePoint team site, amongst other things, including security groups and things like that. Um, one of the big differences between a team site, what we're viewing here, and a communication site, is that a team site is for collaboration. It's for a smallish or medium-sized group of people to be working together, um, whereas a communication site is more usually published much wider to a wider set of people. A team site also comes with a office, well, a Microsoft 365 security group, um, which the people that are part of that are referred to as members, and you'll be able to see the members across the top right-hand corner. Whereas actually a communication site doesn't have that; it has just a set of permissions. Also, you can tell that this is a team site because the navigation is on the left-hand side. A communication site, the navigation would be across the top. So the key features of a SharePoint team site is mostly about document management, if I'm totally honest. So you'll see that there'll be a link to documents on the left hand side. And this is where you'll be able to come in. You can create your folders, upload documents and share and work on documents together. You could also create lists as well. Um, so it might be uh, that you have um, a list which keeps track of like updates or things like that. So in this crisis communication team, they've got a list for project planning. So they would have items in here for the projects that they're working on. Um, they can group them by priority or the progress that they've made. Um, and, and essentially, this is just a template. So I don't have any real data in here. Um, but this is a list that they're using. So we've not only got documents, but we've also got lists, which are basically like Excel online, sort of small mini databases, essentially. We can also have calendars. Um, so it might be that we have... Um, things like a content scheduler, um, we could display that as a calendar or as a list if we wanted to. Um, general task management, so anything that we're putting sort of tasks into lists and assign them to people. Um, general kind of like discussion boards, so we could put in um, some like conversations and things like that, which could either come from Outlook or they could come from um, the functionality of Microsoft Viva. Um, so there's a whole different way that we can collaborate um, in here. Um, we could have wiki pages. So there could be pages of content, which sort of like has how to's of, of how to achieve things. Um, and, and generally, it's it's about kind of using this as a collaborational area for a team rather than it being something which is published and wider to the whole organization. So you can kind of say in this particular crisis communication team, we've got some navigation buttons, so we're trying to make it as easy as possible for people to find things. It might be that we have some FAQs type of thing. Quite often, you would tend to find there'd be buttons that would take you to key documents, policies, procedures. You imagine this crisis communication team, um, if something was to happen, they'd want to be able to swing into action pretty quickly and get the documents they need really um, effectively. Um, it might be that there's more kind of options, buttons that take you to other SharePoint sites or external URLs. It could also be that we want to list out who the crisis team members are. I've even seen something similar like this used in the past before where people have um, um, things like who, who the fire safety officers, who are the first aiders, things like that. And that might just be something that's part of a separate SharePoint site, but it's a good way to use the people web part to see who people are and their contact information. We can embed things like our documents and general activity being what's going on on the site. So what documents have been created, what's been uploaded. And again, we've got some more navigational buttons and things like that at the bottom of this screen. 
Here's another example of a team site. Again, you can see we've got the navigation on the left hand side. Um, we've got sort of buttons in the middle here. We've got upcoming events, so maybe events which that team's working on. So this is our training design team. So people that are working on creating training courses together. Again, navigational options in here, um, linking out to key kind of documents, countdowns maybe to things like leadership conferences or things which are kind of coming up that they are being a part of. Um, documents, key kind of documents, um, as well as kind of news feeds as well that they can create. Um, so as you can see, it's a very similar kind of layout. Team sites are much more basic than communication sites. But I'll go into explaining a bit more about the reasons why you would use a SharePoint team site in just a moment. But first, I just wanted to ask a favor. Please subscribe to my channel if you're enjoying this video. You can like it, and also I try and respond to all the comments which are down below. So if you've got any questions, let me know. If you want some more training materials, then join the few hundred other members of my YouTube channel by going to my channel, clicking on membership, um, and then it's just 99 pence per month, so it's not going to break the bank. But in here, there's a six part series to get you started with SharePoint training fundamentals, which covers loads of really useful areas. And then once you've completed that, there's also a course which shows you how to build out your own uh, intranet package as well. So what we can then do is if you need any assistance um, with additional pieces, security, any questions or help building out your intranet, you can contact me using the link in my bio um, and I can get in, get in touch with me via the contact form and we can help you with your SharePoint requirements. So why use a SharePoint team site? Well, fundamentally, it's about centralizing information. All team related information documents are stored in one place, making it easier to find and manage. So you've got all your information you need in one place. It's going to improve collaboration. So um, with having those documents in one place, it means that you don't have to sort of turn up to meetings and go, well, where's this document? We all know everything's stored in one centralized place. It provides that kind of task and project management. So for tools, for task assignments, progressing tasks and things like that, we've got all of this information um, that we can have inside of our lists inside of SharePoint, and we can see exactly where everything is up to just at a simple glance. You've also got the security element of this. Now, I talked about having these members areas before, so we can add in members into this particular um, 365 group, and that will not only get us into a team site, but it also gets us into the Outlook mailbox. So you get kind of like a shared mailbox as well with this. You get a Microsoft team that you can uh, associate to it, and that one security group will get you into all of these different areas which are vital for the team to collaborate and work together. Also, from a scalability point of view, um, these can be scaled to meet the needs of large enterprises or scaled down to much smaller teams. I've seen teams with just a handful of people in them. I've seen teams with hundreds, um, potentially even thousands of people in them. So you can really scale this to fit whatever size of organization um, that, that you currently are. A couple of downsides, if I'm being totally honest. Um, it is a bit of a kind of steep learning curve if you've never used SharePoint before to really get the maximum out of this. Obviously, the first steps would be to use the kind of document management um, and using the kind of documents and folders and things like that. Um, but the true value that really comes from these additional areas of having like wiki pages to give latest updates and information, news articles and things like that, um, as well as lists for project planning. Um, that's more kind of advanced kind of features. So it does take a bit of time to get used to all of that. Um, and if I'm totally honest, I see a lot of people going with a more Microsoft Teams kind of focus so that they might access this information, these documents via the Microsoft Team. You could even embed some of these lists that you create on that team site inside of Microsoft Teams. So there's a lot of organizations that I work with that take a Microsoft Teams first approach. So they use the Teams um, interface as that interface. So they never even see SharePoint. Whereas there's some organizations which are SharePoint first and they, they view everything via SharePoint and they don't really use Microsoft Teams for this type of um, workload. However, one of the main kind of benefits of using it in SharePoint like this is we've got this search bar across the top. So we can search the site, we can find content from this site. So documents, files, pages, images, all of this great information that we have stored inside of our team site we can use this search bar across the top to find it. 
Um, so you can see here, it's already finding files uh, related to COVID response or whatever the crisis communication team have been putting in here. So I just type in example. I'm not expecting to find anything, but I just wanted to show you the search results page that we can then filter down by files, uh, by sites, by news, by images that relate to this cr crisis communication team. Um, and if there were files, we could drill in more into that, different types of files when they're uploaded, uh, file formats and things like that. So you do have this great search engine, which if you were taking a Microsoft Teams first approach, you wouldn't get that same level of search engine uh, to find content specifically that have been created by this crisis communication team. I hope you enjoyed that video and if you need any professional consultancy for SharePoint then you can get in contact with me using the link in the description below. Um, I can help you in all sorts of different ways with your SharePoint intranet or if you've got any questions you can get in touch today. If you enjoyed the video please subscribe to my channel, like this video and if you've got any questions at all you can also drop them in the comments feed below. I try my very best to answer all of those comments um, and keep your eyes peeled for future videos. Thank you.